Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Aviation has gained much momentum with technology, to the point where commercial airplanes are about to perform auto landings. But there is one aircraft that requires the hand of another wingman to land. This is the story of the pilots who get to race down the runway in both cars and airplanes all on the same day. During the heightened tension of the Cold War, the U-2 Dragon Lady has been the most invaluable asset for the U.S. military in their intelligence gathering missions. The U-2 was built solely for intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance missions. It was first flown in 1955 and extensively used for gathering intelligence on the Soviet Union's military capabilities. This single-engined aircraft is piloted by one pilot and optimized in every possible way to enhance endurance and minimize radar cross-section. The sleek and slender fuselage and the long but narrow wings of the Dragon Lady were key design features, contributing to extended endurance and enhanced flying capabilities. The cruising altitude of the U-2 is around 70,000 feet. Flying at high altitude keeps the aircraft unreachable from enemy fighter aircraft and surface-to-air missiles. In addition to that, higher elevation offers the best vantage point for the pilot to cover a vast area during a single reconnaissance mission. The designers have taken every possible pound out of the aircraft to offer more operating altitude. Each pound saved has resulted in a 10-foot increase in ceiling. The General Electric F118-101 engine, which provides 17,000 pounds of thrust, entails a whopping climb rate of 15,000 feet per minute. The spy plane passes 30,000 feet in less than five minutes and an intermediate cruise altitude of 60,000 feet in 30 to 45 minutes prior to reaching the cruise altitude. The expedited journey to the destination altitude for intelligence gathering supports informed and timely decision making. As the U-2 is optimized for high-altitude operations, flying it at sea level is a task of its own. Unlike the other sturdy fighters, the Dragon Lady is delicate and more prone to damage under heavy gust loads and extreme maneuvers. Pilot shoulders the responsibility of controlling the aircraft with precise demands, where overspeeding could possibly result in ballooning the aircraft due to excessive lift. The pilot flies the aircraft in a nose down altitude during the final approach and flares the aircraft to touch down. The location of the cockpit and the pilot's full body pressure suit hinder his movements to gain better situational awareness. Another rated U-2 pilot drives behind the aircraft in a chase car and communicates the altitude and role of the aircraft to the pilot via a radio link. 
Then, the pilot adjusts the height and roll of the aircraft with the help of elevators, ailerons, and roll spoilers. The data provided by the pilot and the chase car plays a crucial role, as the Dragon Lady has low lateral stability by design due to its bizarre landing gears. The usual tricycle-type landing gear found in most commercial aircraft was not a fit for the Dragon Lady. This was due to the limited space availability. Designers at Lockheed Skunk Works developed the bicycle-type landing gear with only two tandem gears along the aircraft belly. This unconventional arrangement led to several challenges that required out-of-the-ordinary solutions. As there are no landing gears supporting the wings, the aircraft topples to one side towards the end of the landing run. Two wingtips are fitted with replaceable titanium skid plates to protect the tip from abrasion. Now the aircraft is just a dead weight that cannot be towed or moved under its own power. The Pogo team makes their entry at this time with the mid-span outriggers or the Pogo wheels. A Pogo is a small rubber wheel connected to a four foot long curved aluminum leg. The curved shape of the leg enhances shock absorption capabilities and dampens vibrations. They are colored bright orange for ease of identification. The airmen from the Pogo team rush to the aircraft and laterally balance the wings by pulling down the wing. Then two Pogo wheels are inserted into the sockets and secured by a safety pin. Finally, the aircraft is ready to be towed to the flight line, or hangar, for post-flight checks. Airmen carry out general visual inspections, refueling, and various operational checks. In addition to that, with the completion of 1,000 flying hours, each aircraft undergoes a particular phase of maintenance that usually spans 12 days. 130 to 140. 130 to 140. Cables and pulleys connected to the flight control surfaces are thoroughly examined during phase inspections for excessive wear. In addition to the cables, Radar absorbent paint and electronic sensors get a thorough look. With the accumulation of further flight hours, the aircraft undergoes more stringent maintenance actions. Lockheed Martin, along with the U.S. Air Force, conducts the programmed depot maintenance activity, where the entire aircraft is disassembled into pieces. This depot maintenance is performed on aircraft every seven years, or 4,800 flight hours, whichever takes precedence. The entire tail section, nose section, and wings are dismantled from the fuselage. Once disassembled, there will be more than 1,800 parts and 40,000 rivets to be scrutinized. The scrutiny is so intense that the paint is stripped before inspections. Inspections focus on identifying cracks, corrosion, and other structural anomalies in the parts. Once the inspections are completed, the parts are reassembled and painted to give the Dragon Lady a new lease of life.
With all these efforts to maintain the aircraft, flying the U-2 is a task of its own. With an aging airframe spanning over 40 years, the U.S. Air Force has decided to retire the aircraft in 2026. The indisputable significance of the role played by the U-2 spy planes as a high-altitude ISR platform made its way to NASA for the Airborne Science Program to be used as flying laboratories. The high-flying capability of the U-2 made it ideal for various missions, including atmospheric sampling, electronic sensor research, and satellite data validation. Since 1971, NASA has operated two Earth resource airplanes. And in 1981 and 1989, two new airplanes joined the fleet as replacements for the old airplanes. The operating altitude of the ER-2 could range from 20,000 feet to 70,000 feet, where it can fly 99% above the Earth's atmosphere. This capability marks a crucial advantage for the scientists, as the aircraft could be used for all sorts of atmospheric tests. In addition to the high altitude capability, the design of the aircraft offers more endurance, and the ER-2 can engage in missions stretching up to 12 hours. The aircraft has four pressurized cargo bays to accommodate different sizes of payloads. and the nose assembly could be interchanged to accommodate cameras and sensors required for the mission. ER-2 plays a pivotal role in the weather research sector, flying through the most austere conditions with state-of-the-art detectors. One such sensor is the MODIS Airborne Simulator which analyzes the spectral signature of specific locations to detect the availability of certain compounds or aerosols in the Earth's atmosphere. Another critical piece of research is analyzing the overshooting cloud tops of thunderstorms. The ER-2 flying over the cloud tops could garner information on the composition of those overshooting particles to identify their effect on the atmosphere. In addition to the role played in conducting research, the sensors mounted on the ER-2 can detect and map wildfires. The MODIS Airborne Simulator can be used as a wildfire scanning spectrometer for early detection and monitoring of wildfires. Another sensor, the Airborne Visible Infrared Imaging Spectrometer, detects infrared and heat signatures seen through smoke and clouds, which is another great asset that is used for mapping wildfires. Mapping a fire in the least possible time creates an opportunity for enhanced situational awareness and risk assessment for better planning to tackle wildfires. Flying the U-2 spy plane could be either like dancing with a lady or wrestling with a dragon.
No matter how easy it is to land or take off an aircraft in the modern era, the intricacy blend with the U-2 will always be there, which demands the utmost pilot skills and meticulous adherence to stringent precautions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.